Greetings to you all in the matchless name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is indeed a joy to come back to you in this platform, sharing God's message to each one of us. As we begin, let us pray. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this morning. Thank you for your love, your grace and your mercies that have sustained us thus far. As we meditate upon your word, give us your knowledge, your wisdom to understand. Help us to reflect our lives in the light of your word. Get encouragement, inspiration and motivation to live, O oh Lord. We thank you and we praise you. Speak to us. We ask this in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May we all now rise and sing hymn number 93. Hymn number 93, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. As we continue to be in the presence of the Lord, let us be reminded that we have gathered here to worship him, to adore him, and to give him thanks for what he has done and who, is, who he is in our lives. 
Good morning, everybody. Deuteronomy 14, 2 says, You have been set apart as holy to the Lord your God, and he has chosen you from all the nations of the earth to be his own special treasure. What an unbelievable privilege that you have in him, right? Let us sing this song and let us tell the Lord that we are ready to praise him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let us tell him that even though we are standing in the midst of a multitude, we sing praises unto him and him alone.
Hallelujah. Wonderful. God is good. And all the time. You all know which song we're going to sing next week. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night. His light will shine. God is good. God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of Will shine, God. 
says so you are no longer a slave but a son and if a son then an heir through God hallelujah we are his children and he is a good good father unto us that's the song we're going to sing next let us start this song good good father well, I've heard a thousand stories of war they think your life but i've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that i'm never alone you're a good good father who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are. It's who I am, it's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am you have given us is unexplainable the love is undeniable O oh master just let us sing this 
verse one more time oh it's love so undeniable i i can hardly speak peace so unexplainable i i can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love love you're a good 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 father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am yes lord you're a good father who loves us oh master you have given us that promise oh master we are standing here based on that hope o oh master o oh father thank you for everything that you've done to us o oh master you are holy o oh master you are holy o oh lord you are the almighty god o oh master we stand in your midst this morning o oh master we surrender ourselves to you we praise you we worship you and we proclaim that you are our god you are our father o oh master church let us sing this chorus Holy Holy Are you Lord God Almighty Worthy is the lamb Worthy is the lamb for you are holy Holy are you Lord God almighty worthy is the lamb worthy is the lamb Amen. worthy is the lamb Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. You alone are worthy of our praise, O Master. You alone are worthy of everything that we have to offer this morning, Master. But you have promised us that where two or three gather in your name, you will be there. And we believe and trust that you are here in our midst this morning, O Master. We pray that you touch us. you fill us with your holy spirit as we spend this time this morning in your sanctuary oh master we need you to move amongst us to speak to us to edify our hearts and souls oh master Lord, we commit the rest of the worship service into your mighty hands oh master as your servant is getting ready to preach your word unto us oh master we pray that you touch him as well so that he can exhort us filled with your holy spirit to master we come at each and every one of us gathered here into your hands in jesus mighty name we pray amen gracious and loving heavenly father we praise you and thank you for this morning thank you for this opportunity that you have given to us to come together in this manner to worship you to adore you and to give you thanks oh lord as you know 
physically we may not come together O lord but we believe that in spirit that we can unite together in worshiping you O master as you have promised us where two or three are gathered in my name i will be there in their midst yes O lord at this moment you be in our midst O master help us to worship you in truth and in spirit O master help us to love you with all our hearts with all our minds with all our souls and with all our strengths O lord you be our alpha and the omega of this service the beginning and the end you receive all glory honor and praise and bless us through this service we commit ourselves and this service into your mighty care and we ask this prayer in the mighty name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen dear people of god it is indeed a joy to share to you the message of cross as we have been meditating on the cross all these four weeks we meditated different topics on cross of christ the message the meaning the power and the victory of the cross this morning we'll be focusing on the cross that embraces the sinners the scripture portion is taken from gospel according to saint luke chapter 23 verses 32 to 46 as we begin i'm reminded of a story where three youngsters were going to school as they finished college together, each of them selected different professions and they joined. Among them were one was a lawyer, the second one was a money lender, the third one was a preacher. As they maintained their relationship, friendship all through their life's time, two friends always attended the church of the preacher, the lawyer and the money lender. And the preacher always enjoyed their friendship. As the years passed by, they were in their old age and the preacher was on his bed. He sent a message to his friends to meet him. Both his friends, a lawyer and the money, money lender, they came to meet him. And they asked him why he sent a message to meet his childhood friends. The preacher, he said, as Jesus was on the cross, two thieves were there on either side. And as a preacher, before he dies, he wanted his best friends to be one on his right and the other one on the left. Dear people of God, it reminds us the story where Jesus was crucified. His two thieves were there on the cross. The passage which looks Luke talks about in chapter 23 verses 32 to 46 is the incident where Jesus encounters these two thieves on the cross. One sees Christ suffering as a mockery and he mocks at Jesus Christ. The other one repents of his sin and he asks God for forgiveness and entry into the kingdom. Dear people of God, in today's context, cross is an integral part of our living. But when we see it has become more casual and it has become a religious symbol rather than anything that means to us. Though it stood in the history as something, a treason or a death or something shameful, but Christ's death on the cross gave a different meaning, a new meaning to this cross, which is of honor, which is of life. And today's topic also depicts that the cross embraces all kinds of people, especially the sinners who are in need of God's grace, forgiveness. Jesus was a crowd puller, as many of us know. Wherever he went, a large gathering followed him. They followed him because he performed miracles. They were fond of his teachings because they forgave sins of the people. At the same time, it was a plus point for Jesus. At the same time, the crowd was also a drawback to his crucifixion. When we see the same crowd which said, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Those who welcomed them into the city, welcomed him into the city of Jerusalem, the same crowd started shouting, shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Even though God's love was expressed on the cross, 
is love for the neglected, exploited, sinners. Different people understood the cross in different ways. As we see in John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 22 to 30, it says that around the cross there were many people, not only the crowd, there were soldiers, there were Mary, there were Salome, Mary's sister, there were disciples of Jesus Christ like John and many more. As we see, the place of cross meant different things to different people. Firstly, I would like to focus on the crowd. As we know, for many people, the scene of the cross or crucifixion was a place of redemption for them. Many understood why Jesus was here, why he suffered and why he was crucified on the cross. For soldiers, it was just a duty. They were there near the cross. For Mary, as a mother, a caring and loving mother, she was there near the cross to experience the crucifixion. Many saw this place as a place of redemption because as the Old Testament promises, Messiah will be sent to save sinners. Jesus came into this world to save sinners. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Those who believed in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, who came to be a sacrificial lamb for your sin and my sin, they accepted this crucifixion and they were around this cross and they saw this act of Christ on the cross and this place as a place of redemption. Dear people of God, we too many a times we are around the cross, but how we look at the cross matters to us. Is it a place of redemption for you and me? Secondly, we see the place of cross for Salome, the sister of Mary, was a place of rebuke. Because when we see Matthew chapter 20 verses 20 to 23, there was a competition, there was a struggle, power struggle between his disciples. Especially Salome, as many commentators say, she was the sister of Mary, aunt of Jesus Christ. She goes to Jesus Christ and she asks, Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 onwards. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favor of him. What is it you want? He asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said, you do not know what are you asking? Jesus said to them, can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my father. For Salome it was, she was very selfish. She wanted her sons to be seated on the right and left hand of Jesus. And being a selfish mother, she wanted a position for her sons. She always looked cross and the crucifixion, the act of crucifixion as something she can gain for her benefit and for her family. Dear people of God, many a times we do think that if we have cross, we will get some good position. We will be given good status. But dear people of God, let us be reminded that as Christ rebuked Salome and his brothers John and James, that it is not the cup that they are supposed to drink. It is the cup of suffering which Jesus is talking and he said, Whatever he is doing, they may not be able to do. For Salome, that was a place of honor and crown. Jesus rebuked. The act of Christ on the cross was not to give them a place of honor or crown. Dear people of God, when we come to cross, are we like Salome, anticipating and expecting a place of honor and crown for us? Are we like her, very selfish, 
in our attitude? Are we selfish to gain something for our families? Many commentators say after this event of Naomi, uh, Salome seeking position for her children, James and John, James and John were present at this moment. They departed from this place. And many, they say, they never came back. As Jesus was explaining this to Salome, that the cup which Christ is going to bear is not the cup that John and James can handle. And when Jesus was there in the temple, when people came and said, your mother and brothers have come to see you, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verses 15, 50, that for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother, sister, and mother. Those who do the will of the father are considered to be his brothers and sisters. For Salome, it was cross was a place of rebuke. Thirdly, for Mary, when we see the mother of Jesus, for her, cross meant a place of reward. Jesus, even though he was born out of Virgin Mary, he grew up in Mary's family. When he was on the cross, he remembered his mother and he rewarded her with his close disciple, John. He says, here is your son and to his disciple, here is your mother. He rewarded his mother for what she has done and she should not experience the vacuum once Christ goes from this earth. Fourthly, we see John, his own brother, many commentators who commented on John and James departing after Salome requesting the position on right and left hand of Jesus Christ. Among them, John came back to the place of crucifixion. And when John came, John was handed over, or in fact, Christ encouraged John to be son of his mother Mary. And for mother Mary, John has a son. Jesus restored the relationship between a son and mother. He emphasized the importance of relationship on our earthly livings. He not only encouraged or restored this relationship, he takes John as his own brother and he gives him this responsibility of taking care of his mother. He gives importance to the relationship. For John, it became a place of relationship and responsibility. Dear people of God, when we say cross, in today's context, cross means many things to many people. We have our own perspective. We have our own self-vested interest. Many of us are like this crowd which was there. Many of us are like these soldiers. It's just a duty to be around the cross. We come to church. We follow the Lent. We follow the Good Friday services, we follow Easter, it becomes a casual thing, just like a duty for us. For Salome, it was, she was trying to gain something for her family. For thieves who were placed on the left and right hand of Jesus, it was a place of mockery and repentance. For Mary, it was a place of reward. For John, it was a place of relationship. Cross can mean many things to many of us, but what we receive, what we gain, and how we perceive matters to us. And we become like this crowd, seeing, mocking, and ridiculing how can God be crucified? How can Jesus, being a God, miracle, miracle worker, he can die or he can be killed on the cross? Many of us are like Salome. Many of us are like Mary and John. You know better where you stand. As we are in this Lent season, dear people of God, it is time for repentance to seek God's forgiveness in our lives. If we have been 
like any of these people near the cross. Let us ask God for forgiveness. I encourage each one of us to gaze at the cross of Christ in these times where we are facing difficulty, where we are facing differences, where we are facing hardships. The more we gaze at cross, the more we discover ourselves where we stand. In the light of the cross, we are called to renew our lives and refresh our faith. Cross that stood for shame and death Today stands for honor, hope, salvation, and life. Cross has and is to become this power of God's love towards humanity. It should become a powerful symbol of God for humanity in times of fear, anxiety, diseases, corruption, hopelessness. Dear people of God, let us be reminded the cross of Christ can cleanse us. It can heal us and grant us hope. As Jesus on the cross gave hope to the humanity that our sins are cleansed and our diseases are healed, our shames are taken away, our sicknesses are taken away, our divisions are taken away. Everything he nailed it to the cross and he gave us redemption he gave us salvation he gave us freedom to us as we are at home these 21 days let us make use of this opportunity to meditate on the cross the passion the resurrection of our lord let us also take time to intently look into our personal lives and community communitarian lives may it be a time of retrospection introspection renewal and recovery from all the fear may this cross of christ be a sign of promise to us a sign of assurance and hope in the times of hopelessness may god bless us all let us pray loving heavenly father we thank you and praise you for this morning thank you for speaking to us yes O oh lord many a times we take things for granted we take we take cross for granted O oh lord Thank you for shedding your blood on the cross and redeeming us. Lord, many a times we become like this crowd, like Mary, like Salome, like these soldiers, like the thieves next to you. Oh Lord, we are greedy and we are selfish in our approach. At this moment, O oh Lord, we seek your forgiveness if we have gone astray from you, if we have sinned against you, O oh Lord, we seek your forgiveness. Forgive us. Help us to understand the real meaning of the cross. Help us to look at your cross for forgiveness of our sins, to look at your cross with the hope that you will come again. We look at your cross for redemption from our sicknesses, O oh Lord. We look at your cross for healing, O oh Master. We thank you and we praise you. Speak to us in our own context and situations. At this time of need, O oh Lord, speak to us every day. Help us to spend more time seeking your word, seeking your face in our lives. Thank you for being a Lord and Master. And Messiah, we ask this in the mighty name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in faith and confidence, let us receive the triune God's benediction. Now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us from now and forever. Amen. Amen.